Hey, this is Mr. Turek. I'm just going to walk you through how to make an assignment in Teams, uh, how to grade the assignment, and how to export it and import it into Aries. Uh, so this is a kind of a test team for the ninth graders to get them oriented to Teams. So uh, in Teacher View, the best way to do assignments is just go to the Assignments tab. And then you, you see I already have some assignments made. Um, I'm just going to create a new one from scratch. So I'm going to click on Create. Uh, if I had an old assignment from an old class, I could use from existing. If I wanted to do a quiz, I would make a quiz. Usually I'd make these in advance and use an existing form. For an assignment, when you click on an assignment, um, everything is from scratch. So you got to give it a title. Um, and usually I'm not doing this again from scratch. I, I will I will copy and paste everything here. Yeah. And then um the resources are usually uh, what I use the most. So like I will click add resources, and um, I will include a link to a OneDrive file. Uh, that is the one file that I reference for all of my classes for an assignment. And if I need to update the assignment, I don't individually update each class. I just update that file. Um, and that link is right here. And usually the description is just like PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we're just going to attach whatever that is. And, um, you know, in the instructions, I'll tell students to read the PowerPoint. Make sure if you attach a resource like a PowerPoint or a Word document with instructions, uh, if you don't want your students to edit that, um, click on the three dots here and click Don't Edit. Um, I'll just show you what that looks like by attaching something from my OneDrive here. So I'm going to attach this PowerPoint. It'll take a little while to load. By default, you can see that it says students can't edit. Um, and you can leave it on students can't edit and that's great that they switch that from students edit their own copy to can't edit as the default uh, you want to leave it can't edit if you just want them to look at it um, if you want them to edit their own copy that just means that the file you attach they'll get their own copy it'll show up in their OneDrive it'll show up in this assignment and they can click on that and edit it in Teams um, again I usually just link to my PowerPoint presentation or my Word document. And that way, if I ever need to update the instructions or add a couple examples or whatever, I'm not doing that for three or four different classes. You can see I have three sections of Graphic Design 1. I'm not going to individually edit all those assignments. I would rather just update the PowerPoint and then go from there. And then um, however many points you want to put into the gradebook with your categories that you have set up, uh, enter those points. Um, you can also look at the assign to section here. Um, typically I assign to all students and then I click on this and I click on my other classes to assign more classes. Um, and I just do this once. Uh, you cannot, once you submit an assignment to a class, like let's say I ass assign this to period one and two. I can't edit one assignment and have it update to all the other classes it's posted to. You have to individually go and edit each of those separate assignments. So be very mindful of that, that the assignment you send out is the assignment all your classes will see. And once you do, they're not linked together. Um, a brand new feature in Teams is uh, the don't assign to students added to this class in the future. This, uh, this is new. And this is super useful because, you know, sometimes counseling will add a student that just transferred into the school, you know, halfway through the year. And then in Teams, you would see that student has a bunch of old assignments assigned to them. It's always super annoying uh, that you have to go through there and click, you know, don't submit or return or whatever. Uh, this, this gets rid of that problem. And uh, for assignments you know you're not going to assign to students in the future, just click Edit. By default, 
it will not assign that assignment to students added to the class in the future. At the beginning of the year though, I would switch it to assigned to all students. Uh, especially when counseling is switching kids in and out of classes, there might be some like kind of get to know me assignments that you want your future assignments to see. Uh, so I'm just going to switch it to assigned to all students added to this class in the future. That way everybody sees my, you know, business unit introduction assignment and they kind of get a feel for the class. And then down here under due date, you can pick any due date in the future. Um, you can pick a time. I never change that. Um, and then you can change when the assignment is posted. So if you click on edit, you can schedule your assignments. And this is super handy. If you kind of know what the next couple of days are gonna be like, uh, you can just go in here and enter a bunch of assignments schedule due dates you can schedule a post time you can schedule a close date and again a close date just makes the assignment un un uh, submittable so students cannot attach work they cannot do anything to make up their work i typically never close my assignments um, because I let students kind of fix their work if they want to. Um, you might not want to do that. You might want to set a close date for say assignments that you want them to complete on time and you want there to be penalties for not completing assignments on time. That's all this is. You can change that at any point in time should you decide to change your mind. So. I'm going to uncheck the schedule box, but again, that's what this section does. And then this is brand new as well. The post assignment notifications to this channel section. This just means it's going to be posted to general. And if you look, I have um, the list view for teams and my one and only channel in this team is general. If you had different channels, based on say ability level or maybe you teach a mixed class and you have English 1 and English 2 in the same class uh, you would make maybe two separate channels and you could post an English 1 assignment to the English 1 channel and English 2 assignment to the English 2 channel or maybe you have students in small groups and each group has its own channel so this just shows the notification for the assignment in a channel general is the main channel uh, you can change this to include other channels that you have but again there's no other channels here um, so anytime you post an assignment when you click on an, an assign button it instantly sends out a notification to the channel that you assigned it to uh, and that would be general for us that notification takes a while before it pops up uh, I have done this a lot in class where I make an assignment and then I forget to post it and then I post it in the middle of class and I can actually see it on the school network popping up on other kids' computers. It just takes a while. So if you're doing a live lecture over you know, a Teams meeting call and you're expecting it to be super snappy, tell the students to wait about five, 10 minutes and refresh the page because it will take a while to post especially if your class is really large. Um, I found that classes with like over 30 kids, uh, it will take a while. So I'm gonna click assign. If I didn't want to assign this assignment, let's say I was scheduling a bunch of feature assignments, I would just click save. Uh, when you click save, it looks like this. When you click save, it looks like this. There'll be a draft section. Um, your assignments, I, I believe, will be in, in a list according to when you created them. Or I, I don't know if, um, if you like schedule them in a different order, if that changes the order of the drafts. Uh, I really wish they just had a separate column for due dates or schedules so you could just see what order your assignments are in and 
they could just easily stick that in the middle here. I don't know why they don't add that. But as soon as you click on a draft, you'll it'll just open up to wherever you last left it. Um, and then uh, when you click Assign, of course, that'll change to the Assign section. So I'm, I'm going to show you now uh, how to grade and um, how to do that quickly and easily and uh, how to export that for Aries. So uh, this assignment here has 12 students turned in. So just, just a quick overview of this screen. This has all kind of changed a little bit in the past couple of years. If a student has not looked at an assignment, uh, it will say not turned in. And that just means they haven't opened or clicked on the assignment. If it says viewed, all that means is that the student looked at the assignment. Um, if you click on that viewed icon, this is the uh, grading page. And um, it'll open to whatever work they attached. Uh, if they attached a link, Teams isn't smart enough to open that link in a window here. It just says cannot display file. So you have to click on the link to open it in a new tab. Um, you have editing permissions on files they attach, so typically it will open the editor in Teams. If you look at the right-hand side here, um, you cannot make this bigger to read the student names at top, but you can click on this and kind of jump around your students. Under View History, you can click on View History, and it will show you when they actually looked at it. It'll also show you um, a timeline of how many times they've submitted an assignment and how many times you've returned an assignment. So this history section is super useful, especially if you need to pull receipts on a student that said, hey, I, I looked at that assignment and turned it in. You can, you can be like, no, you didn't, or yes, you did. I'm sorry, didn't see it. Um, when you're in this uh, field here, this student viewed this assignment and attached an assignment. They did not click turn in. So that's why it says view, but not submitted. You can see work that's attached by a student, even if they don't click turn in. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I should accept work where a student hasn't clicked turn in, and I'm pretty hard in the camp of, if you don't click turn in, even though you've attached the assignment, I'm probably not gonna give you a grade for it. And the reason for that is, is because if a student needs to resubmit an assignment for feedback, I need to see that you've clicked turned in. Turning in an assignment creates a notification when you grade, uh, telling you that, hey, this student has submitted a new work to this assignment, uh, and they have to get in the habit of doing that so that you can do multiple submissions for assignments. If you're not that kind of teacher, and uh, you're not gonna leave assignments open, to have students submit late work, then you don't really have to worry about this. And you can just grade work that's attached but hasn't been actually submitted. Um, again, submission, like this this student turned something in, they clicked submit. So you can see that in our submission history here, they viewed the assignment and then in like 10 minutes they turned it in. And then I returned it just to show uh, the freshman kind of what a returned assignment looks like. So if I wanted to leave feedback or anything new, it would, uh, or our change is grade, it would prompt me to return the assignment again. And I could click return. I see a green check mark. And then that should show up here. Again, the student hasn't looked at it, there will be no history. So Typically when I grade, I'm in this window and I just key in their grade after looking at their assignment and I just use these arrows here or you can use the arrows on your keyboard. Actually, you can't. Wish you could. So some of these already have grades. Let's just pretend these students handed things in, so I'm going to give them a grade regardless just so we have points in here. It's kind of annoying to grade in this view because uh, you have to wait for things to load and if you're like me and you teach a class that uses very large files it can take a while but usually it goes pretty quick 
When you're all done, uh, you can hit back. And then everything you've graded should be highlighted purple and have a little checkbox. And then at the very top, you can click return. I do not, when I'm grading, return each assignment as I enter a grade because I find it to be faster to just quickly key in that point value and go to the next student. If you hit return, it takes a while, okay? Sometimes a lot longer than that. That was pretty fast. But again, I usually just go through all the work. I give it a point value and I go to the next one. I do not spend time to click on return. And that's usually also just to look at all of the work and kind of jump around and make sure, you know, everybody's been graded that needs a grade. So let's say I'm done grading here. Um, typically at this point, I would go to the top as well, check mark this box. And this is to select every single student. And then I'm gonna return every single student's grade on this assignment. Uh, the reason for that is, um, even though each student has not submitted a, a, an assignment, I'm letting them know that I have graded it and that there is a grade in the grade book. So if you did not return an assignment, it now is a zero in the grade book. Um, and in the student view, they're gonna see, instead of seeing the assignment under the assigned section, they're gonna see it under the completed section. And it's gonna kind of make it obvious to them that, oh, the due date for this has passed. You know, my teacher has graded this assignment. You also, in order to enter these grades in the grade book, um, you basically have to um, make sure you return the grades that you've given. Otherwise, they will not show up on the Excel spreadsheet. So I just return everybody's grades. It can be really tedious if you just want to return the ones that are graded to sit here and click on the ones you've graded. Sometimes, you know, Teams bugs out and you get back to the screen and it just unchecks all the stuff you already entered grades for. So by default, when I'm done grading, I just check all of them and I hit return. When you do that, again, uh, the assignment will switch from currently assigned to completed in the student view and you can export all your grades uh, to Excel. And it'll switch from this column, which is to grade, to graded. So if you keep your assignments open like I do, and let's say, you know, Jimena uh, actually hands in her assignment. Great. So I'll see her work, and it will actually switch from this graded column to the to grade column. In this uh, notification section, the assignment that has been graded will switch from this graded section to the two grade sections. So let's just refresh the page, take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, so this do this assignment here, if a new submission comes in, it'll switch from this section to a different section. Um, and you'll be able to see that, oh wait, she turned hers, yeah, she turned us in 15 hours late. So again, yeah, she just must be she must be logged in and just messing around in here. So now I can see, oh, she handed it in late. Great. 10 points, return it. Right, and now my to grade column is done. And when I hit back, that assignment will be under the do this assignment section. Again, the notifications for that you're gonna get used to really quick. Um, I'm just trying to show you what they look like now. At any point in time, you can click on an assignment that has been graded and export just that assignment to an Excel sheet. So I'm gonna click on the export to Excel button. You should see it download. Uh, you can also do this in the grades section. When you click export to Excel in the grades section, what you're exporting is every single assignment you've graded to Excel. Um, I rarely do this. Uh, I usually do one assignment at a time. So, yeah. Now I'm gonna show you how to clean up the Excel file and make it Aries ready. 
So we're going to click show in folder. We're going to open this up in Excel. All right. When you open um, a Teams Excel file, uh, it's going to be the wrong file format for Aries. Uh, go to the email address column. Double click on this to expand your column to the width of the emails. And what you need to do is you need to get rid of this um, email part. So hit Control F. Control F opens up Find and Replace. Um, that is also under Editing, Find and Select, Replace. What you want to do is take the email section, so the at SMC JUHST on Microsoft.com, copy and paste that into the Find What section, and then replace it with nothing. So don't type in that section. Click Replace All. Click OK. And that's all you need to do for cleaning up the Excel sheet. Um, after you're done with that, to my bad, file, save as is what you want to hit. And you need to switch it to an XLS. XLS is like a, a, a legacy version of Excel. This is, I think, the only version or the only way to save an Excel file so that Aries can read it. And I don't actually change the name of it. I just hit save on XLS. And now we can go to Aries. All right, so that took forever. I'm gonna make a new assignment. Um, I would recommend you name your assignment exactly what it's called in Teams so that the kids don't get confused. Uh, so the one I graded was called Do This Assignment in Teams. So test assignment is wrong. I'm gonna call it Do This Assignment. And then if you have tags for your assignment or categories, keep, keep them the exact same. Um, and then keep the due dates exact same. So if this was due a week from now, you know, August 14th, I would keep that the exact same due date as the assignment in Teams. Again, eliminate all the confusion. Keep the point value the exact same, everything the exact same. And then, um, again, if you're linking grade books, you know, Keep them linked, keep them all the same. Uh, exactly how you have them in Teams is how you should have them in your gradebook. Um, I'm gonna just create this assignment and delete it. So save and close, just to show you what it looks like. And then again, when you're grading assignments, it'll be pretty quick, because you already graded them in Teams. So what you're doing now is you're basically you're just importing the Excel sheet and the Excel sheet will fill in where, you know, your students' names are. Now, this isn't going to actually happen. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the process, but you're not actually going to see the scores fill in. What you're going to see is nothing because I haven't assigned this to a class that actually matches the ID numbers that we cleaned up in that Excel sheet. So click import scores from file, click select file, go to the Excel sheet that is the XLS Excel sheet. If you cannot tell the difference by the icons, it is the Microsoft Excel 97 to 2003 worksheet file format. Again, if you don't know how to change your views, click this little change the view button until you see file extensions. And again, these will not be turned on unless you turn them on in File Explorer. Uh, to do that, in File Explorer, uh, we'll make this full screen, go to View, and then check mark the box that says File Name Extension so that you can see what kind of file type you're uh, supposed to upload. Again, the CSV that Teams makes is not co compatible with Aries. You have to make it an XLS file. So click on the XLS file, click Open, click Upload. And then the next step is to tell Aries like 
how to associate students with each other. So you're going to do it by student ID. So the email column will be the student ID column because you want the student IDs in your class to match up with the student IDs that you cleaned up in the Excel sheet. And then the correct score is the score that you gave them for the assignment. Uh, don't make it the points category. That's how many points it's out of. So you can see that some of these students didn't hand in anything. And some did and got 10 points. Some did it a little wrong and they got 8 points. Once you click import scores, what will happen is it will take a while to load. Page will refresh and you'll see scores. Um, you're not going to see it for this class. Again, this is my graphic design 2 class and I imported scores from a freshman test team. So they don't match up. This is actually kind of handy because uh, you can never overwrite incorrect scores to a class. Um, you can only import corresponding ID numbers. So at this point, what I would do is mass assign values. And I would put um, a zero. And then I'd save mass changes. Okay. And that would just, for any empty score, fill in a zero. And um, you can do that kind of however you want. Uh, if you leave missed assignments empty in the gradebook until a certain time and then enter a zero, this is a really handy feature. Um, if you close grading on assignments, again, you know how to do that in Aries. But that's the basic process for exporting an Excel file, cleaning it up, and importing it into Aries.